So one of the things that has always fascinated me and kept me enthralled and passionate and obsessed with the tarot is the way in which the tarot and especially the major arcana um, to some lesser extent maybe the minors too but it's the way in which the tarot the symbols of the majors and working with those symbols not only in divination but in through study and contemplation and and really and grappling with the symbols um, themselves somehow have an alchemical effect have an have a, an effect of transforming your consciousness and clarifying your consciousness and somehow creating a structure through which you begin seeing the world and through which you begin interpreting and making sense of the world in a not only in a, a way that helps you understand life and the meaning of things better but really in a way that somehow crystallizes um, what everything means to you and, and, and more than that it, it begins crystallizing and essentializing and somehow distilling the essence of the whole Western tradition of the way we think as Westerners um, from the most you know from the from the grossest most explicit level as as uh, as as you know in terms of the values that permeate our culture to the most subtle really refined esoteric and subtle spiritual concepts that underpin those values and things that really stretch back way back to the ancient world and that may sound very um sound very very rarefied and heady and maybe a bit over the top but i mean this in a very practical way the tarot over the years has really um transformed my consciousness i can honestly say that and um one of the majors that really somehow embodies that for me profoundly is the the justice card now this card is my birth card this this card is the when um, when you do the numerology with my birth date and uh, there are a couple of ways to do it but 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 generally this turns out to be my birth card if I'm using the Marseille sequence if I'm using the Rider Waite sequence it's the strength card um, but I, I feel like the justice card really is my birth card or it, it's the card that is the is the the it's the symbol or it's the archetype that i have had the most um profound grappling experience with and i remember when i calculated my birth card when i was in my my teens uh, i read it in a book you know one of any of these tarot books that gives you a method for doing that and i got the justice card and i was like this just uh, what a lame what a that's no fun you know it's it's such a severe card it's it's a it, i mean it's 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 it, it it to a teenager anyway it can feel it can speak about things that maybe you know don't appeal to teenagers and maybe to adults either because whenever this card comes up in a reading and i discuss the mysteries of the justice card with clients um people do kind of like get a little bit uptight with it because of course the justice card is talking about but laws and rules on some level, right? And it's also about, um, you know, talking about doing what is right and having to do with all ethical um, precepts and the ability to practice discernment and apply a sense of fairness to your relationship relationships in the world and understanding that there is a principle that governs that that. There are rules that that tell us what we should and shouldn't do, and it's not just a free for all that we can do whatever we please. That there are consequences to our actions, and often the justice card for me is talking about consequences. You know, realizing that we don't live in a consequence-free universe, and um, so this grappling experience that I've had with the justice card over the years. Um, has been something that has really been it's it's as if the justice card is kind of floating in my consciousness during the day and often 
you know, during normal conversations or things happening in world news, um, you know, this card, the meaning of this card will kind of percolate up into my mind. And resultantly, you know, I started looking into classical um, thinking around this card, you know, the ancient world, the four virtues, and studying the four virtues of which justice is, of course, one, and the other being strength, temperance, and wisdom, other three being, I should say. And um, really, like, getting into the, the what the ancients said, you know, the Platonists, and uh, to some extent the Neoplatonists, and also the Stoics, the Stoics uh, really go you know, really get into the four virtues and, and kind of the, uh, make that a central part of the, the Stoic doctrine. And so if you're looking for more information on studying the virtues, um, then I suggest that. But somehow that became a really powerful entry point into the major arcana for me. And what I realized studying the, the justice card and really getting into the justice card and having it kind of bake me, having it work on me as an alchemical agent in my mind to some extent. And, and of course in client readings, because the reasons, one of the reasons that I've always been really obsessed with studying the tarot is in some way, way grappling, wanting to get better at it, wanting to really understand the symbols, really want to know what do they really mean? Because they're, they're quite elusive in some sense. They have an explicit meaning, but often the closer you get to them, the more you try and grasp the meanings of the cards, especially the majors, the more they kind of have a way of slipping through your hands. It's as if they are, um, they are receding in some sense. And the, the, more you, the closer you come to them, the, the more they begin morphing and changing. And they have, they have, they have such a... Such a uh, 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 if not, not ephemeral quality because they are very structured but there is something for example with the justice card as I was contemplating the justice card and um, thinking about it more you know and trying to 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 uh, distinguish what is the difference between the justice and the temperance card because in the temp for temperance to practice moderation to practice restraint to practice doing things in the right proportion doing things with measure and in the right proportion and self-control bringing things into balance which is what the temperance card is talking about often right it that's what that virtue is talking about but this is what this card um, is often uh, on about but how can you do that without discernment how how can you practice temperance without setting things right without knowing what is right and doing the right thing because that is what governs temperance that's what governs self-control and so the more i thought about it the more i realized whoa the justice card and the temperance card are kind of merging they're they're morphing into each other and they kind of they are the same it's as if you're looking at the one from the, the other as if the, this is the back end of the justice card and then I was obsessed with the temperance card. I really like got get, got into temperance. What is temperance? Studying studying um, the sources, really going back into ancient thought as much as I can. Um, a lot of it is quite difficult stuff to get into. Um, and if you want to, there's I can recommend Nigel Jackson has got a book um, that uh, a treatment on the majors that's really awesome. It's a beautiful book um, that that is somehow esoteric but also rooted in in well-researched ancient thought. And of course, there are other great books like Paul Houston's books. And um, uh, yeah, there, there are many brilliant books. And what I'm, the, the important idea here is that um, to understand that these majors are not just new age, occult kind of things. This stuff is an expression of really powerful, ancient um, and uh, um, f foundational principles that underlie all Western thought that we don't we're not even aware of the fact that we we take this these these ideas for granted as self-evident but in other cultures they might not be as self-evident this is part of the software of, of our of our of our of our worldview and we don't realize that often uh, but getting back to the temperance card as I got more into the temperance card I realized you know, the temperance card is really strength. There is no way 
where you can moderate yourself, where you can modify your behavior, where you can temper your actions and do things in the right proportion, where you can restrain your impulses without, in, with, you know, that's what temperance is about, restraining. It's the mixing of the water and the wine together um, to get the right proportion. The only way you can do that, the only way that that is even vaguely possible is with strength, you're right. You see, she's controlling the animal there. She's controlling that beast. And, and that is what strength is. Strength is not only um, the ability, it's not only fortitude in the face of, of difficulty, which is, of course, an a, a component, but it's fortitude in the, in the face, uh, it's not, or rather, let me say, it's not only the strength of being able to face the monsters on the outside, the, the, the challenges and the enemies and the things in our, this life that we need to confront and tame, but also the ability to confront the monster on the inside, the animal on the inside, and restrain that animal in order to, to be able to express temperance, in order to control yourself. So the temperance card begins morphing into the strength card. The, uh, there is no clear beginning and end between strength and temperance, it seems to me. And then, of course, the only way you can know how to do any of this, the only way you can understand begin to grasp what justice is, what is right. How do you understand what is right, right? And why would you want to, why would you want to control yourself? Why would you want to moderate your indulgences or, or, or your excesses? Why would you want to do things in the right proportion? Because of wisdom, of course, you know that if you don't do that, then things fall apart, chaos ensues, your life begins crumbling in some way and you will begin spinning out of control you will become a slave to your actions or to your impulses and then of course it turns into the devil card right and then I noticed that all the majors do this the majors begin you know any you can grab any of the majors you can start with the Empress life birth, creation, facility, and, you know, of course, pleasure, and beautiful, right? But the, the, on the one hand, unrestrained, she will become the devil. She will morph into the devil, right? But also, her natural conclusion you know, is death. Without, without life, without death, there is no life, and anything that is born must die. Um, and in fact, death is integral to the life process because, for us to consume, to eat anything, we have to kill. We whether they're animal, animals, if you're veg, if you're uh, if you're a carnivore, or whether if you're vegetarian, plants, you have to kill those things in order to eat them, in order to live, right? So the Empress, which is also connected to growth and, 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 and nourishment and, and, and uh, food and that kind of thing, is in, intrinsically connected to death. And all of the majors do this. All of the majors um, morph into... They, they are, each major is a doorway into every other major. And they don't stand in isolation. And the, the closer you get to each major, the 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 more it begins morphing into any of the other majors. And then, you know, my, my conclusion this morning, in, I was meditating and the, the justice card percolated up into my consciousness as it always does. I was thinking about rules, the rules in relationships, the rules in sexual, in, in, in sexual scenarios, the rules that our culture puts on us um, connected to relationships and all these kinds of things. And all, of course, these, this is, of course, grappling with justice you know what what rules govern things what is right and then i you know started experiencing this thing where temperance would come up and then temperance would become strength and strength would become the hermit would become wisdom and so on and so on and so on and i was cycling through all the majors seeing all these connections um and having a moment and of course uh, this culminates in the the idea that well, maybe there is only one major.
Ultimately, there's only one major arcana. 